Hello, out from my own. This is my Lanier's 20 questions video tag. Uh, I was tagged by Natalie Patel, the wonderful and beautiful Natalie Patel. Thank you for doing it. Um, it's great. Both of you I love, anyway. I'm not going to sit here and go on about you guys anyway, because you know already. Um, but yeah, I love you guys, thank you. I'm going to link both of your channels, because if everyone does, hasn't watched you already, then they really should. Lania, such a true gent. Your videos are the same as Natalie's in a way, to me, in the way that they calm me. You pour your drink, you set the scene, and um, I've been trying to figure out actually where it is that you live. You might have said it in a video before, but I think I may have just not heard, or I just don't know, I don't know. I don't know where it is, I'm trying to figure out. Um, but yeah, thank you Natalie, this is a great uh, questions tag video. I've literally just glanced over the questions, I haven't sat here and painstakingly thought about the answers because sometimes off the cuff is better. I've, a few I know, but a few I haven't seen, so I'm just going to see how it goes. So, here we go. Question one, who inspires you? Um, I would say my friends. I know that sounds really cheesy, but my friends inspire me all the time. They inspire me. If I'm feeling rubbish or I'm doubting something, they easily know how to turn me around and make me feel inspired and to carry on with what I'm doing, whatever, whatever it may be, not just this channel or anything. Career, emotionally, mentally, anything. They even make me run faster for a bus sometimes. Josh, I'm talking to you. Um, if you're talking about on a celebrity kind of level, um, my favourite singer, India Ari, she really inspires me, only because she's a bit cheesy in the way that she tries to promote world peace and the spirituality. I'm not really into that so much, but she makes me feel soothed and she doesn't always harp on about love in her songs. So her songs are quite inspiring to me. There's all different kinds of ones by her that I love. So, uh, what makes you get out of bed in the morning? Um, I'm not gonna lie, my wages. I like to get out of bed to know that I'm gonna earn my money that day. Um, usually because I have a goal that I'm trying to reach and the main thing would be holidays. That is my other huge passion. Um, if I know that I'm saving for something, <clears throat> Yeah, it makes me get out of bed in the morning. Oh, and parcels. If I know a parcel is coming to work one day, usually perfume, that makes it really easy to get out of bed. It makes the journey to work really worthwhile. Three, um, what is your favourite sensation? I don't know what that means. I'm not really sure what that means, Lania and Natalie. Sensation as in bodily sensation or... Okay, um, my favourite sensation is, you know when you listen to music and you get the goose pimples, a certain note or a certain chord or the way someone's inflection in their voice, um, I, I call it orgasm notes, that's what me and my friends call it, orgasm notes, when you just get hit a note in a song and you just get the tingles, that is a wonderful sensation to feel and I always feel the need to show it to people, oh my god I just got orgasm notes from a song, that's my favourite sensation. I'm also a bit of a thrill seeker um, and theme parks and stuff like that really excite me. The fear of the adrenaline and that drop when you go down a huge hill on a roller coaster, I love that kind of fear excitement sensation. I hope that's what you mean. <laughs> anyway, that's that one. What's my favourite word to describe perfume? Um, I usually say effervescent quite a lot. I like that one because Fragrances don't only have, it's not always about what they smell like, they also are very textured. Smells have textures. Things are smooth, things are rough, things are sharp, things are soft, things are effervescent sometimes. And certain fragrances are effervescent, they feel a bit fizzy, a little bit sparkly, mainly because of aldehydes, I would say. Um, but yeah, effervescent is the one that I tend to lean towards, and more recently, ferocious as well, because some fragrances do have a ferociousness about them. Next! What is the most overused word to describe perfume? Uh, there's a few actually, and I'm probably guilty of doing all of them as well. Uh, synthetic, 
and floral favorite of mine <laughs> only because I've confessed before florals are my weakness it's they are the hardest to describe for me so you can say oh it smells a bit florally uh, floral synthetic and generic I've used the word generic before as well and I've used it when I've described a lot of celebrity fragrances because a lot of them I do feel are on one level but generic I think is a little bit of an escape word and you don't really know what to say and synthetic too so yeah what is my least favourite perfume note? that's easy, oak moss I just don't like it I because of my studies and smelling a lot of things very individually for sometimes days at a time and really getting to know them oak moss just really turns my stomach I don't Okay, there's a conversation outside going along with a few birds. Um, yeah, oak moss. It's I just I've always said it smells a little bit like a, a dusty old cupboard, <clears throat> and I don't really like sheepras in general. And oak moss is a very big note in those. Just don't like it. Okay, what turns you on creatively, spiritually, and emotionally? Well, that's kind of the same as the first question. It's my friends. It's people that when I've got to my age that I am, I'm 34 now. By this time, a lot of people usually have already decided or have in their life people that they know are going to stay forever and these are the people that enrich your life and uh, as opposed to drag you down I guess and my friends are always people that are positive you know and I'm, I'm the same back to them so it's my friends again. I know it's a really easy generic answer but it's true. Um, what perfume has turned you on this month? Uh, this is one that I did have ready because you can't just... This, Comme de Garçon 2 in the strangely not square but kind of square bottle. This has come out of nowhere and just knocked me sideways and it's gone to the top of my want list. My friend Chris actually wears this as well so I, I've been around it a few times but it's kind of like a song where everyone likes it or you hear it a few times and you don't really like it and then you just hear something one time and then you just, you're spun around and you absolutely love it. This is absolutely gorgeous and I can't even begin to describe what it smells like. I just know that I really want it. Wow, it's so nice. It's kind of like a smooth, sweet, turpentine smell. Right between masculine and feminine. Just the perfect down the middle split of something gorgeous. I don't know. I'm going to review it soon as well. I just need to get to know it a bit more. Comme de Garçon 2. Absolutely love it. So, um, what excites you in the world of perfume reviewers? That one's easy. What I like in the world of perfume reviewers is the fact that so many of us now are no, not just sitting in our rooms, I can include myself in this now, <laughs> um, and reviewing fragrance after fragrance after fragrance. A lot of people have access to perfumers themselves. There's a lot of guys uh, in New York and stuff that are actually getting to go out with their camera and interview the noses behind the fragrances you know if there's to see something about perfume on, te on normal television regular television is very rare I think so it's really cool that YouTube has given us the insight into people and they can take their cameras out sit down with an in with an actual nose behind a perfume and ask them stuff about it I think it's amazing and I would love to be able to do that um, maybe I should try, I would just be so nervous. But even, you know, Lania, you've done it recently. I think it's amazing. There's a guy uh, that does street scents. He goes out and interviews people on the street. It's nice to just take perfume out of our room bubble and go and do something really cool and interesting with it. My personal one is I'm going to try and take you guys around shops in London because I know London is amazing and that you, I have access to so many perfumes that people don't. So. Uh, in a week or two I'm actually going to go to Les Centres. I emailed them today and said can I come and film and I went to Rulier White recently as well so I plan to take my camera out and just get the camera outside it's so much more interesting isn't it so that's what I love I love that people can take their camera out and really get to speak to the noses behind the fragrances and get to the nitty gritty okay Okay, what is your biggest pet peeve about YouTube reviewers or the frag commun community in general? Um, snobbery. I really don't like snobbery, and I don't mean snobbery in terms of 
everyone is allowed to buy whatever they like. It's a free world and you can do what you want. What I don't like is when people will look down or shun people from a community or a group online because of their perfume choice. I think it's so beyond ridiculous and it can feel like high school or senior school as we call it in England. I've seen a comment before where somebody said I would never respect somebody that would wear X perfume and to me, I, I don't know, it's flabbergasting. I just think it's ridiculous. I don't like snobbery in terms as well of when you go shopping. I don't like the fact that I'm looked down on by certain sales assistants because they don't think I can afford what they're trying to sell me. Half the time I know more about them, more about the perfumes than they do anyway. But places like Harrods, I know it's renowned for being a hugely posh shop, but there are certain areas of it where you know you're going to be looked up and down before you can even get in because they will judge you on your appearance. They don't know how much money I've got. They don't know that I might just say, whack, can I have that um, 100 mil bottle of Portrait of a Lady, please? Which I'm going to do soon as well. Yeah, snobbery is my biggest thing. Um, as a person that reviews everything I can. Perfume's perfume. Yes, there's good quality. Yes, there's bad quality. But there's always hidden gems, and I truly believe that. So <clears throat> that's my little rant about that. Uh, what smell in nature do I love? Oh God, loads of them. Oh my God. I've said before in reviews, the smell of petrica, it's when it first starts to rain and the rain starts, if it's been sunny and it starts to rain and the rain starts to hit mud or asphalt, which isn't very nature, but the smell just as it starts to rain, petrica is amazing to me. I wish I could bottle it, the real one, not a fake one. What smell in nature do you hate? Um, mushrooms. They're just vile. It's my worst food ever. The smell of them when they're cooking, the smell of them just growing. I can't smell. Smell. I can't deal with that, the smell of that. And there is a plant somewhere. I don't know what it is, but I've smelled it a few times around. And this is going to sound really disgusting, but it smells like male ejaculate. Sorry, I need to just go behind. Wait for five seconds. I can't it's really disgusting but it's true it's true I don't know what it is but if I found it I would cut all of it down I love nature really there was another one actually when I, I went to a place called Centre Parks I don't know if anyone knows, I think it's a British thing it's like a gorgeous wooded area there's quite a few of them around and we've got hired bikes and on this bike ride w like riding around every single day when it's past this certain area it smelled kind of like hickory chips and um, what I can imagine hickory chips smell like before they get smoked. A gorgeous smoky wood smell that was absolutely unbelievable and I just stopped the bike every time I went past and just, you know those kind of moments where you just go, ah. Oh. I had a few of those in centre parks. I don't know what that is either, but yeah. Next question. What historical person do you imagine would have smelled wonderful and why? Well, I know that one as well. That would be Napoleon. On my course recently, I did an entire couple of months on the history of perfumery, and Napoleon absolutely astounded me. Do you know this? Napoleon was so into perfume that he had a bottle designed, kind of like a sword shape, a glass sword with a metal lid, filled with perfume that he could slide into his boot and take into battle with him. How crazy is that? Just in case, you know, he needed to reapply in between slashings and stuff. I, I just thought it was really impressive. So, without a doubt, Napoleon smelled amazing during his battles and wars and whatever else it was that he did. Napoleon, what is your favourite language other than your native tongue? French. I find it to be very beautiful and flowing when it's a soft when it's somebody that's softly spoken and kind of whispering French gives me tingles on the back of my neck which is probably kind of why I like perfume a little bit as well it helps uh, I think it's beautiful it's, it's strangely enough we had a choice to learn German or French at school and I picked German because I just I found it easier and I just flowed towards it um, not the prettiest language in the world I'm not gonna lie 
But French, yes, I really, really like it. And what is your favourite curse word in that language? Merde. What is your dream profession? I'll give you one guess. Perfumer. That's what I'm working towards. That's what I want to be. I would love to be a nose. I don't know if I'm aiming too high, but you've got to go for your dreams, haven't you? Next. What profession would you not want to do? Oh, a few. In this city, I would never want to be a traffic warden. There's too many people in this city that are just out to get you. Constant barrages of verbal abuse from the public, just for doing your job. Um, a lot of people have a hatred for traffic wardens in this country. I would just, they're so brave, just coming, coming across the public in their most angriest state every day would not be something that I would want to deal with. I've seen Londoners, they are crazy. I would never want to be a, what are those people called that clean out sewers, drainage people. <laughs> People that have to go down and block people's toilets or go in the sewers and stuff like that. Why would you want to do that? No thanks. Uh, I wouldn't like to be pest control either. You know, going into people's houses that are really horrible and they've just got like a million cats and there's cockroaches everywhere and you know like hoarders? Have you seen hoarders? I wouldn't want to be those people that have to go and do that. It just comes from being a bit of a clean freak and an OCD person get rid of bugs and rats and things. No thanks. I'll pass. I'll stick to what I'm doing. Um, if heaven existed, what would you want to hear as God... Uh, no. If heaven existed, what would you want to hear God say as you entered into the pearly gates? That's such a cool question. <laughs> I don't know. The perfumery's at the back? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I just want to know that everyone that I've loved in my past was there, so maybe... Everyone's waiting. That would be nice to hear. <laughs> or welcome, as opposed to <laughs> you can't come in. Yeah. What would God smell like? <laughs> I don't know. Something luminous and golden and light. Doesn't Ghost have a fragrance called Ghost Luminous or something? Maybe something like that. I'm not even going to say Glow by JLo because that would be really bad and probably insult a lot of people. Something luminous and bright and I guess God would have smelled every perfume ever made on the planet so he might have his own one or she might have her own one, I don't know. And lastly, who do you tag? I tag the perfume nerd, no surprises there. I told you recently, I think you might have become my favorite YouTube reviewer. You've struck a chord with me and I really, really like your views. I like your deadpan sarcasm. Everyone go and check out her channel and she's from New Zealand as well. And I'm going there soon, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but thanks Natalie so much for tagging me. That was really fun. <laughs> and Lania, as always, a gent. Well done with your with reviews and stuff. They're great. And I, I need to come over and have some cocktails. It'll be so fun. I'm much one Mano and click my logo to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. I can't stop smiling, I can't stop smiling, sorry.